Today we'll talk about blocking off the exhaust crossover on your intake manifold, a tip on ordering gaskets, and what to do if you need block off plates, but your gasket set didn't come with them. So let's get started. So just a quick word about stock intake manifolds from back in the day. They typically had a heat crossover for the exhaust gas to pass underneath it. So it would warm up the intake manifold a little bit and help atomize the fuel and air. Now, whether that worked or not, who knows? We don't have leaded fuel anymore, so it's really kind of hard to judge that. Today, with a, with a stock intake manifold they will still have that in there but most aftermarket intakes will not now this one is a performer eps intake it's the upgrade to the old 2101 intake and it still has that crossover because this intake manifold is used in more of a stock type application or a little bit hotter than stock still a really good low-end torque intake manifold and it'll be perfect for the gmc truck so we've got to decide what we want to do with this heat crossover. Do we want hot exhaust gas passing through the intake manifold, an aluminum intake manifold that really carries heat really well, or do we want to block that off? So we're going to talk about the gaskets and the different types you can order and why you need to figure out, one, whether you're going to use it or not, but what the kits come with and if you need to build your own block off plate. Now, if you go into a regular auto parts store and tell them you're looking for intake gaskets for a 71 GMC pickup with a small block Chevy, you're going to get a stock replacement gasket. And in this case, they come with just a block or a exhaust restrictor and not a block off plate. And there's only enough to do one side. Some of them will restrict how much exhaust gas is run through the intake and it'll tell you which side you need to run it on. However, in this case, because we've got stock intake gaskets and not the performance intake part number, which I think is a 1204 or a 1206 for a small block Chevy, we're going to have to make block off plates if we want to block the exhaust gas from going into the intake manifold. So I'm going to show you that here right now. Now this restrictor, all it does is it has a little tab, few tabs on it, fits into the gasket, you roll them over, it crimps together, and it has a nice little restrictor to restrict how much exhaust gas goes under the intake manifold. And it works fairly well. Um, for a stock, bone stock setup, it is probably just fine. Um, we throw the micrometer on here and we can kind of see how thick it is because in this case, since it didn't come with block off plates, I'm going to make my own. So I need to know what kind of material I can make it out of and how thick it needs to be. And in this case, we can look at a lot of different materials that I have laying around the garage and see if one of them is going to work for the thickness that this block off plate is. Now I grabbed three things in the garage that's made out of metal. First is a little piece of sheet metal here. It's 18 gauge. I use it on a transmission tunnel. It's too thick. Aluminum can, it's, doesn't, it's not the right material and it is certainly way too thin. This can of acetone though is certainly very good and it is the perfect thickness. So all we're going to do is cut the back side out of it out and it will be a perfect start to making our own block off plate now once we hack this out of the back side of this acetone can and we measure it i can confirm that it's just thick enough that it's probably going to be just fine now i've used this material quite a bit in the past and know that it works just fine without causing any burn through or leakage past it or warpage or melting of the material so this is going to be absolutely perfect for what we're going to make out of it now to make these block off plates, it's really very simple. You need to make it narrow enough so it fits between the two bolt holes that secure around it, but you need it to be wide enough so that little band of material or little bead that the gasket has, that's a raised up little piece that crushes down to help seal, is wide enough that it will cover all of that and you'll get a good seal on the gasket and your new block off plate that you're going to make. So that's all I'll do here. Just form it out and then just roughly cut it out to the size I need it. Now this isn't some super precision high tech down to the thousandth of an inch that it has to be. It's you're just roughly cutting this thing out of here. It's not not doesn't have to be perfect, but certainly you want to make it a little clean so it doesn't stick up too far above the intake manifold on the top side and have some nice sharp edge hanging out there. And certainly it needs to be low enough on the bottom side. 
again, though, sort of covers up everything and really how far it hangs into the intake manifold, I don't think really matters as long as it doesn't come into contact if it's too long with push rods or affect the oiling in any way. So we're just going to make a nice little small plate here and cut it out and then we'll final shape it into the size that we need. Now you don't need to get overly complicated here. Just a nice pair of good tin snips that won't warp or wrap around the material is just fine. All you need is just some, make some nice straight cuts. And that way when you, uh, you know, you've got something a little bit easier to work with, a little bit nicer. And again, so you know it seals up everything on that, uh, that port going through the, the gasket end of the, into, the, into the intake manifold. And after just a couple of quick minutes, a little bit of shaping, a little bit of measuring, just a little bit of confirmation that everything's the right size on this thing, you're done. Uh, you don't need to do anything else with it. You don't need to really prep it. Uh, you don't really need to take the paint off of it. You certainly can hit that with a little bit of sander and remove that off there. But in this case, I'm just going to go with it as it is. It'll be just fine. Again, I've done this quite a number of times over the years when I didn't have a block off plate. Now what I will do before it goes back into the intake manifold is I will hit it with a little bit of RTV to kind of tack it up a little bit so it's in the position that I want it to be when we apply it to the uh, the cylinder head on the engine. And all that does is just assures you that you've got the coverage that you want. You're not into the bolt holes. You're good on the top side and the bottom side of the gasket and everything is good to go. So just tack it up with a little bit of RTV, let it dry a little bit and you'll be just fine when uh, we go to assemble this. Now two really quick things here on the RTV. One, get one that is a high temperature that will take a little bit of heat. Now, it really doesn't matter too much. Once it's all bolted down and it's all sandwiched together between the intake manifold and the cylinder head, you're not really going to have much of an issue with it. But a good high heat one will help uh, from burning and, you know, causing you some smelly, nasty stuff, you know, down the road when you're, you know, first firing this thing up. The other thing is don't use too much of it. You're just trying to tack it to the gasket, get it to seal all the way around, and just give it enough that it seals it into a spot where you know where it's at when it's set and you go to install it. So those two tips right there are, are certainly, you know, important. You, you never want to overuse RTV on anything, especially on an intake manifold, because you don't want it into the water jackets or the exhaust ports or, you know, have too much that bleeds over into the uh, into the valley, uh, lifter valley and all that other stuff. So just be very liberal with it and, and don't go, uh, you know, too crazy and uh, or very conservative with it, I guess. And uh, just don't, don't go too crazy with it and it'll be just fine. And once we get the intake manifold down on the engine, you can see how that kind of squishes out of there because we'll RTV that just a little bit on the gasket side again, just to make sure it seals up with the cylinder head and the intake manifold and you're done. It's not overly complicated. That little block off plate doesn't stick up too high. It seals nicely. There's just a little bit of RTV that's squeezed out of there and that's it. That's all you need to do. And it's sealed and it's blocked off from the exhaust pass over and and you're in good shape. And that's literally all there is to it. You're just trying to block that that hot exhaust gas from underneath that aluminum intake manifold on a performance engine on today's, you know, fuels. It's just not needed and you want that cooler, denser air going down into the engine. So that's just a quick little tip on block off plates when to use them and when the stock ones, I guess, are okay. And when, you know, you just get the restrictor plate, how to, how to make your own. So if you got any questions, don't hesitate. Please leave them down below. If you got something cool out of the video, please leave me a thumbs up and we will catch you guys on the next one. We'll see you.